No parent worth their salt would allow just anybody to take care of their kids. After all, you can't watch over them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's why we have daycares to begin with. But after the tragic death of a toddler at an unlicensed daycare center in Ontario, the question becomes, how do you know that the daycare space is truly safe? Don Giesbrecht is the CEO of the Canadian Child Care Foundation. He happens to operate his own licensed facility for 200 children in Winnipeg, and he joins us here in the studio. Don, thanks so much for, for coming in. My pleasure. Um, Thank you. I wonder if you just want to give us uh, the reaction, because I don't want people to believe that every single unlicensed daycare is of the ilk where this individual died in Ontario. So mm -hmm. give us a, a take on what most unlicensed daycare, I'm not, I'm not here to promote unlicensed daycare, yeah. I just want to get a, an overview here. Yeah, and across Canada, I mean, let's just start with some, some of the numbers and how it breaks out across Canada. We have about enough spaces, licensed, regulated, funded spaces in Canada for about 20% of the children that need them. That means 80% of the childcare market is in some other form, be it unlicensed care, be it grandparents, be it a family member, that sort of thing. And, and you're absolutely right, a lot of people who go to college or university to get their early childhood educator credential, when they go off and have children, maybe don't re-enter the workforce in terms of working in a child care program, but will open up something within their homes. And so these are you know, wonderful people who have great credentials, have the education behind them, but clearly when you have this, this vast difference in, in how child care is done in Canada and how it's regulated, how it's licensed in Canada, um, you're going to come up with stories and incidents like what happened in Toronto, like what happened here in Winnipeg not long ago, like what happened in BC just over a year ago, where there's tragedies and really poor judgments uh, being made by the providers and the operators of these unlicensed programs. Licensing helps to build in checks and balances and accountability into a system, whereas the other system does not have that outside of just the parents and day-to-day -day drop offs. Don, this is just anecdotal, but I, I still remember uh, because uh, she was just a wonderful person. Her name was Irene, and I was like a child. I just called mm -hmm. her Auntie Irene, right? Mm -hmm. And so Auntie Irene took care of yours truly and four or five other children who were also friends of mine mm -hmm. uh, after uh, kindergarten because, of course, my parents were both working, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, my, my guess is, and she was a, fr a friend of the families. My guess is that's what most unlicensed daycare is, either friends of families or relatives, right? It's really hard to say because we don't have the data that, that talks about this or that has researched this in a really clear way. What happened in Vaughan really shows the extreme of that, where you have this small home where they're taking in 27 children. Um, and from what all the accounts that I have heard and the accounts that I have read, uh, parents weren't allowed to go in certain portions of the house. And again, when you have such a pent up demand for childcare because the majority of families need it, it creates this alter market or this other market that doesn't have those checks and balances. And if we'd lived in that world where you had these wonderful people who just brought in a few children and they were, were operating under the guidelines. And so, for example, in Ontario, it's five children plus your own. In Manitoba, it's four children plus your own. If you're operating in those guidelines, that's not the issue. It's when you start stepping out sure. of those guidelines and you start saying, you know what, there's money to be made here because in supply and demand, we've got the supply, the demand is huge. Yeah, the, 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 the 27 kids in those conditions, that's not what I would call an anti-Irene scenario. But I was just yeah. wondering if we could be realistic about what most of them are. Uh, here's, the, here's the question, and it's not that I want to blame uh, the, the, the parent of the child in, in Vaughan or other, other parents. But can you explain to me, are we living in a world where parents actually have to be instructed to, if they are using unlicensed facilities, at least get a tour yeah. of the facilities? I mean, I mean, to me, that's just a, a huge red flag when someone says, no, no, you're not allowed in the part of the home yeah. where the children are. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of there like a, like a bullet. Yeah, it's a great question, Charles. Um, you know, having worked with probably thousands of parents through my career, they call you up in desperation. They call you up crying. I have a boss that, that wants me at work tomorrow. I cannot miss any more work or else I'm going to be fired. And so when you have a desperate population looking for care, they will make bad choices because that is the only choice in front of them. If we really want to give families choices, we really need to, as a society, start valuing children more, valuing early childhood more, and getting more involvement from our leaders to really address this issue in a holistic way. Okay, in general, I'm a free market person, mm. okay, but that there's a, a wide definition there. Uh, here's what I don't understand. 
if we have a free market in this country, if we have a free country, and if there is this huge pent-up demand, as you say, why don't we have enough supply? Does the government limit the supply? Depends on the jurisdiction you're in. Um, you know, across Canada, it's a mi mix of family child care or home day care or day homes, however they vernacular they use within that region. There's a mix of profit programs and non-profit programs across Canada. For whatever reason, we just don't have that inertia that's taken us past that 2080 split that I referred to at the, at the top. We need to somehow get our provinces, get our federal government for that matter, really pulling in the same direction policy-wise, um, looking out for families, and really implementing systems across Canada that provide quality care and early childhood education to children. Is it difficult? Let, let's say we've got people uh, in the audience who are entrepreneurial and they're good with kids and they've got maybe even an education background. Is it difficult for them to get into the licensed daycare business? Again, depends on the jurisdiction you're in. Um, uh, certainly if you're in places like BC, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, as I understand it as I see it, it's not that difficult. But it is a, an incredible startup cost uh, to get into it. And then let's talk about fees. I mean, you know, the average cost, just as a comparison of a university degree in Canada, is just over 5000 or about $5,300 a year. The average cost of childcare in Canada is generally double that. So the fees you're charging to parents make it very unaffordable for them. I mean, let's just talk about family debt and what's going on there. And so in order to develop a child care program and then charge what you need to to pay people reasonable wages to do the upkeep and the capital investment is a disconnect, right? So in most provinces, you're going to see public investment, even with for-profit providers, in some way, shape, or form to help support care. But those budget, budgets are limited. And, you know, we keep being told that health care, education, other things are priorities. Young children have not been a priority for for as a nation, really, um, for a long time. 30 seconds or less, are you for national child care, government-driven? I'm for national policy and national conversations. Child care is a provincial responsibility, but it takes a national conversation to really get it moving forward. Thank you for what you do. My Thanks pleasure. so much. Thanks. Don Giesbrecht.